Hello, my name is Ian Prosser from Botanica Design in Tampa, and I'm here today with Accent Decor to show you some of the newest products in our industry for weddings and special events. Accent Decor is our industry's leader and our go-to source for fabulous containers and unique items to make our weddings and special events above and beyond the most special in the industry. So in this video, we're going to show you how to use the ceremony stand as an actual backdrop for a wedding ceremony. This is a really useful piece, but could be used in so many different locations. We can either use it for the front of the aisle or the back of the aisle, or perhaps to put some place cards on. So let's get started. If you do this piece in your studio, all is good and well. If you're gonna do it in the actual location, then you would probably want to put a drop cloth down because as you push the flowers into the floral foam, it's gonna push water out and you don't want to get a mess all over the floor that you then have to clean up. So what we want to do initially is to get all of our mechanics in place. So when you look at the stand, you can decide where you want to place the floral foam cage. The wonderful thing about this stand is there are many places that you can attach it. So I think today I'm gonna to go up to this corner and then we'll place another two cages elsewhere. To secure it in place, I want you to use a wire. This is probably a 20 gauge wire. We're going to use some floral tape and just very quickly put a little skin of tape onto the wire. This then allows us to have a little bit more grip as we twist the wires behind the cage. What we want to do is go underneath here at both sides and then go underneath the cage at the bottom. It will hold the cage in place. So I'm just twisting the stems of the wire at the back. You'll notice on this stand that I have chosen three different placements. The reason for that is I want one design to flow to the other. When you see the finished product, I'm gonna stand two pieces together and they will completely coordinate one with the other. I'm initially going to do a, an outline of the foliage so that I can get the, the size and the dimension that I want for the completed design. Because the top arrangement is the one that's gonna be seen most in photographs, we want to make this the most impactful. Before you start, you need to look at your product and decide how you're gonna use these flowers, the quantity that you use in each one. I don't want you to get carried away and make this top one fabulous, and then we get here and we have nothing left over. So let's just start with this uh, Italian Ruscus. It's got a really great shape to it, beautiful curves that will help us achieve this very fluid line. Look at the nice curve that this gives us to the next piece. Now you'll see we're coming right off of the stand so that it gives us some volume here, rather than everything being contained within this framework. This way it gives us more of a fluid line and allows us to make it more artistic and give us a softer, more romantic look. So now I ha you can see I have the dimension of the design that I want to do. I have the, the length and the height here. It's in scale to the stand. And now what I want you to do is to take one variety of flower at a time and use it completely. First of all, we're gonna start off with some of these beautiful Hawaiian dendrobiums. I'm going to do a couple of stems here that just follow the curvature of the foliage that we've already inserted. So now I'm gonna add some of the lemon leaf or salile, and I'm going to go right to the back of the cage. Let's use all of the foam and not just the front of it. Remember, covering your mechanics is one of the most important things that you can do. Now we're ready for some of the more focal flowers. So let's use the hydrangea, which gives us the, the biggest body of flowers. Hydrangea require lots of water, so you want to push that stem very deep into the foam. So now we'll take some of these beautiful roses. Now these are gonna be the focal points, so you want these to project forward and give you some depth in the design. You can take your fingers and place them into the petals and open them up to give some really great impact. It doesn't harm the rose, so don't be afraid. But we want to have the biggest show for the photographs. 
The nice thing with this stand also is it gives you the ability to put your hand behind it to give you more stability as you, as you push the flowers in. I'm using thinner stemmed, more romantic flowers. If you were going to use heavier stemmed flowers, say like tropicals, ginger, birds of paradise, etc., then you probably would want to do the next size up of the cage. Then we've got some more garden roses, which are a little bit more petite. These roses have a very heavy petal count, so let's open them up and use them and let the client enjoy. Notice how we're bringing some of the roses out to give some good dimension. When the flowers are dead, the dress is in the box and the food's been eaten, what are we left with is photographs. So we need to make sure that everything that we do reads very well in the photographer's photograph. So now I'm gonna include some of this beautiful pink peach stock and just again distribute it between the three designs so that there's some continuity. And this big arrangement at the top needs to be the showiest for sure. Now that we have the main shape, it's important to fill in, giving it some depth of color so that it reads well. And then we just have a little bit of lysianthus that we're gonna add into the arrangements just to give a little change of texture. Let's not stick it in as one full stem. There are many pieces here that we can get from this. Add some seeded eucalyptus. Uh, the nice thing is this, this eucalyptus has a little pinky mauve tint to it, so it, it ties in with our color palette beautifully here. Let's get it into the focal point of the design. Look at the beautiful movement that we have here. There are two ways that people will ask, who did your flowers? One is, who did your flowers? And the other way is, who did your flowers? And so that in itself, it means that people have noticed what you've done and that they'll probably ask for a recommendation. I'm just gonna add another couple of pieces of the Ruscus here. So if you just play with it, just massage it a little bit, this will allow us to have a curve going in the opposite direction from what it really wants to do. And this way, now see that here's my line that is leading you over to this one here. So voila, here is our pièce de résistance at this wedding. You can see how it, the composition comes together. So now we're going to put the two stands together and show you how the altar looks completed. We're just gonna add the finishing touches. We've got a beautiful selection of lanterns here that you can see in all different shapes and sizes. And look at how this geometric shape picks up on the shape that's on here on the stand. And we're done. So what I want you to look at now is the composition of these stands and how they look separated. You can also use them together and you could use multiples. You could use two, three, four, five, which Ever amount you need to fill that stage or fill that backdrop. So it really works well. They're very, very stable, which is really nice. And the wonderful thing is that the foot is underneath so that when they come together, they sit together perfectly. The one thing that you need to do if you're gonna have them pulled together is put a zip tie around it and make sure that they stay together. Thank you for watching. To find these products and more, please visit accentdecor.com.